Imagine that you're a humble professor sitting at home drinking your morning coffee when suddenly four police officers bang on your door. They demand to know about the dangerous thoughts you expressed in a recent YouTube video. <gasps> After conversation, they admit everything you said is factually accurate and you've done nothing wrong. They leave, <sighs> but that night, no fewer than 29 police officers surround your house forcing their way in while you're away, without a search warrant or just cause. 29 police, like you're a criminal mastermind with an arsenal of weapons and goons they must fight their way through. 29 officers apparently needed not to stop human trafficking or another heinous crime, but rather to stop a simple thought crime. When you return, you're arrested on the spot under an arrest warrant that won't even be written until the next day. Is this some dystopian sci-fi movie warning against the dangers of censorship? No. This is contemporary Indonesia, where a prominent YouTuber was arrested in December and hasn't been heard from since. His only crime? Telling the truth about Islam's most trusted sources. Indonesia is a battleground, not between warring armies, but rather between religions. The avalanche of apostasy just starting to take hold in the Arab world hit Indonesia a century ago and continues to grow. The island nation is now home to well over 10 million Muslim background Christians, the most in the world. As a result, the remaining Muslim majority is desperate and angry and they still have the power to enforce their angry will. They control much of the media and government and have passed laws against insulting someone's religion. The Constitution may say one has freedom of religion, but on the ground, it's quite difficult to leave Islam. Enter YouTube. Christians have taken to the platform to preach the gospel with greater impact and less intimidation than can be done in person and preach they have, drawing 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 or more subscribers with videos in the Indonesian language. One such channel is Inyo Manis, a 50,000 subscriber channel run by Gratio Pelo. Pelo is a Coptic Christian who speaks Arabic, a language virtually none of the nation's 250 million Muslims understand, <laughs> and thus He's a big threat to the bliss of ignorance of what Islam actually teaches. Or at least he was before December 6, 2022, when Pella was arrested and disappeared from society. The story begins several months prior. On February 23rd, Pello published the 248th installment of his podcast, Critiquing Islam. The subject of the day is Muhammad's adopted son, or perhaps I should say, formerly adopted son, Zaid, and his wife, Zainab. According to Islam's most trusted sources, Muhammad went to visit Zaid and found his beautiful daughter-in-law scantily clad. His heart leapt, and he desired her, but he resisted the temptation. Fortunately, Allah corrected Muhammad and said the Prophet had no right to refuse Allah's gift of yet another wife to add to his growing pile of wives, far in excess of the four the Quran allows. Zaid, wanting to please his adopted father, divorced Zainab, and all was good. <sighs> Except it wasn't. It seems Muhammad's contemporaries found this act vile and disgusting, <sighs> so Allah revealed that Muhammad had to marry Zainab, to solve the age-old problem that no one ever actually had. The question, whether it was okay to marry the ex-wife of your adopted son. The controversy raged on. So Allah solved things once and for all, by abolishing adoption, thus removing any kinship relationship between Muhammad and his bride, <sighs> along with the supposed reason for the marriage to have been prescribed to begin with. These facts, facts which again come straight from Islam's most trusted sources and even made their way into the Quran as divine revelation, 
angered Indonesian Muslims who caught the podcast. Instead of getting angry with their disgusting prophet or angry at their own sources for recording the incident, they got angry at Pello and demanded he be silenced. Defilently, the brave Pello, who worked as a professor at a small Christian college in East Java, challenged Muslims to have him arrested. Pello apparently believed the law would be upheld, and he'd face no penalty for simply reporting the truth of what Islam's own sources teach. When four police visited him on the morning of December 6th, it appeared he was right. They questioned him at length about the video, but could find nothing that was untrue in what he had said, and they left. (sighs) However, they returned that afternoon with a summons to appear for further questioning on Friday, December 9th. No doubt Pello is feeling anxious about being summoned, but what could he do except continue his normal life the best he could? He left his young child at home with Grandma and went grocery shopping with his wife as planned. While he was away, the police moved in. One car after another arrived. A YouTuber making podcasts is far too dangerous for one or two police to deal with. Better call in the whole station, 29 police in total, and surround the house. Who knows, he might brainwash his way out of the arrest without such a show of force. And there's no time to get an arrest warrant. Why, this man might blow up people's minds with more facts if they wait another day. Soon, an officer lost patience and broke down the house's door. Police rushed into the building as if it was a SWAT team raid to end the hostage situation. They screamed and yelled at the elderly woman and the young boy, demanding to know where the dangerous criminal was hiding. The man who dared to speak the truth about Muhammad must be found. It may seem like outrageous police brutality, but who can blame them, really? The Muslim officers were no doubt just thinking of the example their prophet left. Muhammad had a hundred-year-old man killed for writing poems about him and had slave girls executed for singing songs. In comparison, the police weren't brutal They were merciful. When Pello returned, he was whisked away for a night of interrogation. Did he have a lawyer? Don't make me laugh. People Muslims fear don't have rights. They are threats to society who must be stopped by any means necessary. And peaceful debate, or even the due process of the law, sure isn't going to work. Miraculously, the next morning... Twelve hours after the arrest was made, charges were finally filed, and an arrest warrant was issued. The alleged crime is the most grievous of all. Not rape, or murder, or theft, or conspiracy, or anything benign like that. No, Pella was charged with blaspheming Muhammad. Welcome to Indonesia, where the Constitution means little to parts of the nation, and Sharia reigns supreme. Within days, word spread. Muslims took to social media to celebrate their victory. Today was a day they would not be humiliated by having their own sources read to them. Today, they could pretend Muhammad was the prophet they wanted, and not the demon history reveals. Hani Cristiano, a Muslim convert from Christianity, bragged about having a high-ranking insider at the police station who arranged the arrest. One might think Hani, as a convert to Islam, would have many good reasons to believe and nothing to fear, but apparently not. Apparently, force is all that matters to him, much like the original converts to Islam 1400 years prior, who either wanted their share of the war booty or feared Muhammad's armies who were seeking it. Other converts expressed the same on their channels, relief over their arrest and joy over the presumed suffering. (laughs) Where is the peaceful Muslim who believes he has the truth and is unafraid to answer questions? Where is the loving Muslim who wants the best for his fellow man no matter what? Not in East Java, a region gripped by unparalleled Islamophobia. Fear of Islam from Muslims who hate what it teaches, 
but are too cowardly to face the corrupt police ready to enforce Sharia. As of early February 2023, no one knows what happened to Gratio Pello. He was quickly transferred to a larger city, but hasn't appeared in court since. His family hasn't heard from him in weeks, and the Inyo Manis channel has gone silent. I don't know what will become of Pello. Perhaps he'll get a fair trial and be released. Perhaps he'll be locked away for many years. Or perhaps he'll simply remain disappeared because an officer took the law into his own hands and ended the threat. Whatever happens to him, however, I know that it's too late for Islam. Starting with no more than a couple dozen believers ready to give it all for the truth, the church was built on the blood of martyrs. In less than 400 years, it had conquered the most powerful empire in the world, with nothing but a powerful message backed by the truth and the power of the living God. Today, the world moves much faster. The global avalanche of apostasy started when the gospel arrived in Indonesia just over a century ago. How long can Islam, a religion dependent on secrecy and ignorance, continue to stand in the face of what are now 28 million Indonesian Christians, nearly half of which come from Muslim backgrounds? Jihad is failing. Knowledge is growing. And Islam is on its way out of the islands. Allah is a mute idol, unable to do anything, and his corrupt Sharia police can do little to help. The Internet Akbar Allah and the Gospel is greatest of all. To learn more about Indonesia's history of Christian movements, click here for the story of Kaye Sadra, a Muslim who found Christ in the late 19th century and then led more than 10,000 other Muslims to do the same.